Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. Uh, I just wanted to say congratulations. Um, you know, Rivian just announced that they are um, the first uh, company to produce a production customer ready uh, electric truck, which is huge news. Uh, now I will uh, also say that apparently uh, the GMC Hummer EV uh, customer ready versions might also be running off the assembly line as we speak. So, you know, it, it could have just been an, a matter of hours, right? Uh, a foot race uh, to the finish line to see which uh, major automaker was able to produce the first production electric truck, uh, whether it was GMC Hummer EV, whether it was, you know, Rivian to, to much fanfare. So this is great news for everybody. You know, we're entering an era where, you know, 300 plus mile uh, electric trucks will finally be available uh, to everyone. So congratulations to, you know, RJ at Rivian. Congratulations to, to GM uh, building the GMC Hummer EV. But anyway, since I don't really have access to either of those uh, fancy new production electric vehicles, I'm just going to go back to what I have and what I know. And I, you know, all, all joking aside, I actually did want to hop underneath uh, this 20-year-old uh, uh, electric truck and um, show the undercarriage and where the battery was fitted, the battery tray. A lot of you who've been following my channel have seen me uh, do my battle, battery build, and uh, I thought I would go under the undercarriage to show actually where it fits. Some people have mentioned that uh, there were even spacers placed in the battery tray to, to give it a little bit more vertical room uh, under the chassis, and I'm just not sure that that space is actually there. Uh, but either way, I can show sort of the bolt up points and things like that. I'm in the process of uh, um, replacing the shocks on this, and that'll be a different video because I think there are some very unique aspects of electric vehicles that could maybe benefit um, from shocks or rethinking how we look at shock absorbers. And I'll mention that too as I'm doing that video um, on replacing the, the shocks on this, uh, the 20 year old shocks on this 20 year old EV pickup truck. Um, but anyway, even without that sort of extension and added headroom for the battery, I'm reasonably sure that I can fit enough batteries in there for about 300 to 320, 330 miles worth of range in this truck. So again, not bad for a 20 year old uh, production EV. Uh, but that being said, let's just jump underneath the undercarriage. I wanna just show around a little bit, talk about uh, some of the bolt up points and show sort of the clearance and just a different angle or a different view of the truck than I've, uh, than I've showed before. Um, and uh, as some people were curious about it, and I'm really hoping that because trucks like this, uh, this Ford Ranger, uh, were sold in the millions, right? Um, I, I'm really hoping that maybe these body on frames are, are something that people maybe consider converting over to electric because they really do lend themselves to it. So maybe some ideas about the bolt up points, how to reinforce the frame. Uh, this, this might help DIYers who are maybe considering maybe converting a, a Ford Ranger that wasn't originally factory stock electric from this era. So anyway, let's just jump underneath. All right, so here we are underneath. Um, we're looking back at the rear uh, drive motor here. And uh, you can see how they did this across axle with the CV joints. And you know, this is one of the reasons why Ford was able to make so much space under here for this battery uh, tray is because rather than having an axle run and you know try to widen out the view here um, rather than having the axle run down this way so this is where the engine bay would be so i'll just turn it you know, turn it over here so this is where the engine bay would be so you open up this entire channel um, by putting in a rear wheel drive and um, you know I think I think it's preferable for a number of reasons including the fact that you know rear wheel drive just appeals to a lot more people so you know I was making all of those jokes about modern or production uh, electric trucks but the fact is uh, there was also the Chevrolet uh, S10 EV which was again a factory built electric truck over 20 years ago. Now GM, they made the decision to do a front electric motor 
a front AC electric motor and you know I think their motor might have been superior to the one that Ford used in this just based on uh, power to weight ratio and things of that nature but they made it a front wheel drive in an S10 that was just not something that I think was acceptable for a lot of people um, you know maybe works as a fleet truck but um, just in terms of appealing to what people want I think a rear wheel drive makes more sense and then the other thing too is once you start loading this this area here this channel uh, with batteries that adds a lot of weight to the rear of the truck so you know a lot of truck guys can tell you that if you're uh, driving without um, any weight in the rear uh, you can lose a lot of traction on these rear tires so what you really want is to have some sort of an even weight distribution and the beauty of electric trucks is uh, you can make them rear wheel drive and because the batteries uh, you know put put weight throughout the vehicle it actually um, adds traction to the rear tire so you can get away with rear wheel drive and you'll have you know just as much traction with the truck unladen as you will with a load in the back so um, I think I think this is a really good smart choice for Ford to do uh, now the other thing is too now uh, what you'll notice is they're cross members so uh, just connecting this frame and some of them I think are pre-existing they exist in the regular truck you know a lot of the bolt points for uh, the bed um, are the same uh, from the gas truck to the uh, electric truck uh, but some of these reinforcements are new um, and then of course um, you know some of them have have changed and so looking at this this is the toward the front there's a an arched cross member and this is that really short area of the battery tray that I can't really fit batteries into very well um, but it was arched to give it one continuous uh, battery tray to the front um, but it was there to you know just make sure that there's added structure that wouldn't have been there on the frame otherwise so the other point that I think needs to be emphasized here are these uh, these are the bolt-up points for uh, the battery that goes underneath the battery tray that goes underneath and so you know the the lag bolts go through and you know uh, you know Sandy uh, Monroe can sometimes be polarizing but one good thing that he had mentioned that I wasn't aware of is the bolts on these are actually threaded with a unthreaded portion and the way he describes that is when you bolt up a battery with that it actually gives I guess like elasticity or something to the bolts so um, I guess it maybe relieves pressure on the threads um, but still secures uh, secures the battery very well so um, it, this is something that I think he had even mentioned that maybe in the Mach-E teardown so this is something that Ford has been doing for a very long time uh, with their their lag and support bolts now there are six of these um, at various locations along the frame so there's another one here and then that front portion of the frame up towards the top also has a bolt up point uh, for the battery so if you bring around here, um, I can show it from the outside, right? This is this is what it looks like from the outside. Uh, so you can access the bolt heads, um, and then of course it comes in under here. So so these these lag bolt these lag bolts these six lag bolts are responsible for for carrying you know in the case of the lead acid Ford Ranger Electric up to you know a ton of weight so they're very capable very um, very strong bolts and uh, but yeah so this is this is really the undercarriage the channel and you can see this is the the break point between the cab and the uh, the bed of the truck and you'll notice there's there's a lot more clearance under here under the bed than, than when you get under the cab um, and what I found though is like I said even still even this this portion there's at least about nine nine to ten inches of clearance uh, vertical clearance across and there are some cells that might allow me to basically cut this battery off so that I only use essentially from this portion back 
and that actually frees up a huge amount of space up the up at the front but the idea is you actually have bolts and room up there that if you did want to convert this to a four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive um, as long as you could fit enough energy in this back section you'd have enough space for a fairly large um, battery now I think that's kind of um, you know that was kind of the holdup and why Ford made as many concessions as they did when they made this this truck is because battery technology just wasn't where it needed to be so um, you know if you're using lead acid or um, NIM batteries you just can't fit enough batteries for a viable truck in that short of a space so they actually had to take advantage of that whole front section and one more thing while I talk about that because like I said having um, you know these modern lithium batteries so I'm electing right now for lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries uh, and that that added energy density well even without that right Ford was able to to set this up so that you didn't compromise anything on that bed space right so this is fully capable um, as capable as the gasoline Ford Ranger of, of, of its time and basically everything except for payload and maybe towing and then of course range or refueling time um, but outside of that everything is basically um, you know just as capable um, as if you were you know in a gas powered truck and that's why I know some people had mentioned well would you consider using the bed to hold batteries uh, Ford set this up so well I just really don't think that there's a need to do it right uh, I have plenty of space down here uh, the battery tray is is fairly large so I mean at some point yeah maybe I'd want to work on the ground clearance a little bit um, and and maybe that's just one other one other thing to note they used a four-wheel drive chassis um, to give enough ground clearance where the battery tray um, wouldn't rub right so basically you still have six eight inches of, of ground clearance um, even though you don't actually have a four-wheel drive you know drive line so it's just a four-wheel drive chassis um, but yeah so I mean those are those are kind of the considerations but I don't really want to compromise on the truck being a truck and luckily like I said Ford did a good enough job that I don't really have to so um, yeah I think I think this is just a basic rundown of what the undercarriage looks like uh, you can see some of the wiring uh, going through uh, some of this does control the the, the motors and uh, and the controller and ABS and and braking systems and things like that uh, the the coolant system is actually on the outside of the frame um, but that's also um, underneath basically all of it out of the way um, where where you know where it needs to be all right well I hope that was helpful I hope you um, you know having a little bit of fun right at Rivian and GM's expense for their um, newfangled electric trucks but um, yeah I hope this was informative I hope you had like I said a different view of the undercarriage of the Ford Ranger Electric, what it looks like, how the battery bolts up, um, and just kind of seeing how big of an area is actually available underneath these body on frame trucks. And then, like I said, maybe encouraging people uh, to do some of their own conversions uh, and, and just maybe think about adding their own battery trays, things like that, how you can do it um, with all of this space that's sort of allotted to you underneath these uh, these trucks. So let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you're doing one of these DIY battery uh, conversion, EV conversions for, for some older donor uh, internal combustion trucks. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and thank you for watching.